Hey everybody, James from Cycle Studios here. So I just wanted to say uh, I'm happy to be back. Uh, I took about a six month hiatus. It's been like since the end of December uh, since I posted. It's actually closer to seven months now. That being said, life's been busy lately and this video will maybe shed some reason as to why. So I decided last year in the fall that I would pursue a graduate degree while working my full-time job and this video is more or less about how to balance those two things and uh, my experience so far and how to do it uh, so you're not starving yourself of professional performance and work time uh, studies and to be able to still be successful and you know get a 4.0 and also uh, your work outside or your out work life outside of work and school and not be able to starve any one of those just kind of balance them all together so that being said let's get started so the first thing I think I want to cover is uh, do you want to pursue a graduate degree in embedded systems or a, maybe even any any field in engineering while you're working full-time I think that really boils down to uh, a couple things. First thing is, are you interested in the areas of study that you'll be pursuing? Because really that's what's going to drive you to finish the degree. Most jobs won't gatekeep you from certain positions because you don't have a master's or a PhD. That's pretty unlikely, especially nowadays with an engineering degree. So more than likely, you're probably going to want to pursue it, not because you think you're going to get a better title or better pay, but because you enjoy learning and you enjoy the topics you'll be studying or researching. Uh, the second reason would be if you want to pursue a PhD in the future. It, it would make your life a little bit easier, but if, realistically, if you want to pursue a PhD, you're going to have to exit the workforce anyway. There's not many, uh, at least electrical or computer engineering PhDs that you can do part-time, and that being said, too, remote as well. So keep those things in mind. Another thing to factor in is will your work, uh, place of work, it reimburse you for your studies because it's also something to think about as well. Now from the standpoint of is it hard to balance everything? Work, life, and school. Yes, it's challenging. Uh, and depending on your life situation, it can be harder <laughs> than uh, others. But the good thing is is that you can do it. And I think the number one thing I've found to be very helpful for me is time management. So the first thing you do is take a look at the syllabus figure out all your deadlines uh, and which ones are most important and start to plan ahead by sanctioning off time to study and also too sometimes work demands a lot your project needs your support needs your help of course it's got to take priority but really at the end of the day what you're gonna have to do is sacrifice sleep and that's what I did also too you have to be careful uh, you don't want your health running down on you and you also want to make sure you have a life probably outside of both these things too so you also have to tell yourself, and I've had to do this myself a few times, that it's okay not to know something to the nth degree. It's okay to stop uh, at a certain point, and you'll still end up okay. As long as you try your best and you study hard, you should do fairly okay in a graduate class. So far, I still have a 4.0. I've only taken two courses. I'm taking it one class at a time, uh, but it's possible to balance everything. It's just, it just can be very stressful. So one of the things I sacrificed uh, going back to school was actually YouTube in some way, shape, or form. I still can get videos out here and there, but it's much more sparingly. It's not nearly as consistent as it used to be, which I'm actually kind of okay with. It's fine, and uh, I'll still get videos out every now and then. The last thing I'll mention about should you pursue this type of uh, opportunity, I would say if you're interested and you want to do research or you want to learn more about the topic definitely do it but if you're gonna do it for a, a position pay or anything else similar to that regard I wouldn't bother more than likely it's not gonna play in your favor and even if it does uh, you're sacrificing a lot for marginal gain so I would say only pursue this if you're actually interested in doing it finally um, I'll talk about classes I've taken so far and how I did and also I want to ask you guys a question as well so classes I took I took a digital design class so it was all VHDL and FPGA we used an Arctic 7 and it was kinda of like a fundamental digital design class I learned how to use VHDL uh, to design hardware circuits through the HDL in this case um, and 
it was really fascinating. It was eye opening to me. It was so so much different, th such a different way of thinking than programming in C or assembly or C plus plus. It was just a much different mindset, and that was kind of my pitfall at first until I started realizing that. The second class I took was a much more advanced class. It was a PhD level course. It was called Advanced Microprocessor Application. So for this class, we used a Zinc 7000 uh, SOC. So it had an FPGA as well as a coprocessor. In this case, was a ARM 32-bit processor, some Cortex variant. And this class was super interesting. So what we ended up doing is actually making a VME bus emulator from scratch. Uh, so for those who aren't familiar with VME bus, it was a uh, serial bus standard that was very uh, robust and super tolerant to noise and temperature and things like that. And uh, it was used on you know fighter planes and it's still used in industrial applications today. So what we did was me and a small group actually recreated the arbitration, uh, the scheduling, and all the bus bus grant access and control through this uh, 7000 or through the sync 7000 and we actually implemented the read the write uh, of multiple different uh, end effectors and we uh, implemented the read and write and tested the read and write functionality using C code which was really cool on the same chip so the FPGA designed all the hardware for bus access and control and also interrupt request and generation and uh, we used the C program to test those out, the reads and the writes across the bus. That was awesome. And basically what it ended up being at the end of the semester is you could plug the thing into a VME backplane and it would just work, which is <laughs> really cool. So we were, uh, that one I learned a ton over. That class I learned a lot, but once again, it was a lot of late nights. Uh, it was, I'll have to look back and see how many lines of VHDL it was, but it was in the tens of thousands uh, of lines of VHDL. It was very complex, um, but I did learn a ton. And so I think what I'm trying to get at here is, is if you want to pursue this, be ready to sacrifice a lot, but also be ready to reap the rewards too. I've already found multiple instances in my job where I've actually been able to apply my newfound uh, knowledge and expertise to help the company do well. So that's a benefit that you can find from something like this. But to wrap up, you can do it. It just will take much more effort uh, than you anticipate. And you're going to have to make sure to budget your time well. And you'll do just fine. Uh, so as I say, the 4.0 dreams are still live for me. Two classes down. But I've got eight more to go. <laughs> so we'll see where it ends up. Anyway. If you guys, I do have a question for you guys. Thank you for all the new followers and supporters. These past few days I've been overwhelmed with the amount of support I've gotten and also the amount of <laughs> viewership. That's pretty awesome. Uh, in a video I made almost a year ago. But please tell me what you guys want to see from me in the comments in terms of embedded systems. I'd love to make more videos about it, but I don't really know what anybody's interested in in particular. So please comment below uh, what you'd like to see because uh, I'd be happy to make a, to a video about any sp specific topic in embedded, embedded systems or even make something. Uh, that might be fun too. So thanks again for all the newfound support and thank you for all your uh, kind comments and such. And I'm absolutely excited to get back making videos again. This is James from Zygal Studios, signing off.